Welcome to TMS Insights. This is our second wrap-up of the reporting season, which is now all but done. Um, and just a little reminder, we're in the middle of works on our floor here. So, Ben, we're a bit dislocated as we are, but quality of the vi videography is still high level and uh, the content will be very good, I'm sure. <laughs> well, and yeah, let's if you can see the carnage behind the camera at the moment, the you'd understand side. more. Anyway, um, we're getting but, through. But there wasn't carnage on the market. Uh, the reporting no. season was better than expected. We think about 60% of companies beat expectations in the season. Yep. Uh, 30% missed. That's normal. That's yep. a, um, and that's actually quite a good result. So we were a little concerned coming into it, but um, ultimately pleased overall. Yep. No, I think there's some... Um, one of the key themes that emerged is that the consumer has been a lot more resilient in Australia than the market was expecting. And a lot of the um, the trading updates for, you know, the July, mid-August sort of numbers for particularly in that retail space yeah. said that things are holding up better than expected. And, um, you know, it's a bit more cautious, but certainly the market was pretty downbeat coming into this period. And we've seen a good rally in the market on the back of these results. Yeah, it's interesting. And I think that's why people sort of want to go to a full bearishness or, or be absolutely optimistic. And the reality of it is it's not either of those things. It's not that bad, though. And good businesses are continuing to make good money yep. in this environment. Yeah. Let's get into Let's it. Let's get into it. REA Group reported, um, you know, we knew it had been a flat listings period. Yeah. Um, and it was a flat net profit line. Yeah. But the market liked it. Well, it was just, I mean, what an, like to grind out some revenue growth, it yeah. was 1%. Yeah. But when you think what they were cycling against in the previous year, which was a frenetic period of housing market yep. activity, um, but what the market really cottoned on to is we are now seeing listings return to growth. Um, and I think, you know, anecdotally, we're all seeing and hearing that in front of us. Um, we saw REA put through a pretty significant price rise back in March. Yep. And so we're going to now be cycling against Good a numbers. very weak period yeah. Yeah. Um, and with some big drivers and the market's onto it now. And they love a company that can put up prices and doesn't impact on their sales. That's Completely. a great thing. So yeah. it's a terrific business and it remains well appreciated by the market. Look, another one, Ben, I know you wrote a very good article there that made uh, wide publicity. People may have read it on Goodman Group. Goodman, a really good result from them. Great result. And um, I think if there's one thing, one presentation I, that re has really stuck with me this earnings season, it was Greg Goodman's presentation. And um, because he really saw the future in terms of the demand for industrial property as, um, um, as everything went online. And what he caught out in this result is a big pivot towards um, storing data mm. in industrial properties. Data centres, yeah. Data centres. And um, he said, you know, I'm, I'm not making this call, our company's not making this call, that it's our customers. The market. That yeah. Are making it. yeah. So he sort of, you know, Amazon is Goodman's biggest partner, but they also do um, works for the other big tech guys. And um, he said, we are getting um, these companies talking to us about where they're going to need assets in 2028, 2029. He said, it's just kind of extraordinary. So, And this won't surprise us from what we've spoken about with the cloud, with clients over the years. Microsoft yep. Azure, Amazon Web Services, Google, Google Cloud. Cloud. Yep. It, it's it's all there and it's coming through, particularly in Goodman Group, which is that's a bit of a surprise. It was them though. It, yeah. it, I, I think so. Um, but you know what is really going to hyperdrive this over the next decade? I mean, I know everyone's talking about AI, but it's real. You know, yeah. and, and if you want um, to deliver AI solutions, your data must be stored in the cloud, Absolutely. and companies are going to have to store huge amounts more data than expected yeah so it's that was an interesting one for me and um and at the time of, of security about internet and data of course yeah. it's pretty relevant yeah so that was good i know one that you also found really good we've heard from aram um, mccaskey a number of times at uh, altim that was a cracking result the market loved that yeah. yeah yeah no they they that was probably one of the highlights for me um it wasn't so much the numbers themselves. It was more the we are seeing serious uptake onto into the cloud. Yeah, out in three six five, same theme. Yeah, um, and you know they they again they're cycling against a period where a lot of engineering work was put on hold for COVID. Yeah, for COVID, yeah. and so the engineers weren't as active. So the usage of the platform, and so that you know I think it's still another thing, Jeremy, is there's companies cycling against unusually strong periods unusually weak periods. Different for every business. Still normalising. Yeah. yeah. And, um, but our teams was clearly 
I think, a standout sort of result. Um, one that was sort of a very fine result but a dreadful market reaction afterwards was Wise Tech. Yeah, yeah. It had been just so strong, hadn't yeah, it? So- yeah, yeah. I had run very hard into the result and, uh, you know, some insight from them is, you know, I think it's a reminder is when they put new customers, particularly big new customers, onto the platform, there's a cost in doing that up front mm. and then it takes time for the revenue to flow. Um, so that in the short term impacts on your margins. And WiseTech is currently onboarding FedEx and Kuna and Nagel, Amazing. two of the largest yeah. logistics companies globally, onto their platform. Um, the outlook, I think, is still superb. Yeah. The share price has come off. But, 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 but it's got big multiples and that's what happens with those high growth stocks. So yep. you do so that if I said to you, Ben, that West Farm was to take a rally on the back of its performance out of Kmart, I think, a few years ago, <laughs> we all had a big laugh. I mean, yeah. We know what a great business, business Bunnings is. But actually it, it was the result of those mid-tier retailers yeah. that helped promote West Farm. Uh, absolutely. I mean, you know, Bunnings did, I think, 4%. Revenue growth, Kmart did 25. But again, in the 12 months prior, everyone was going nuts doing stuff on their house and garden because they were stuck at home. And so for Bunnings just to have grown against that period is a very impressive effort. Mm -hmm. But you're right. I mean, it was really the lithium exposure we've been speaking about with West Farmers. It was Kmart that delivered the the frosting and um, they've gone ex-dividend. And carried the dividend. And carried the dividend. Um, So that's a pretty big top company of course yeah. we've always liked it and talking lithium talking about a very interesting good company mineral resources you mm. know in terms of well lithium and everything else it's doing um that that's had a fair bit of share price volatility it's a big t- time you know it, it, it's appearing as a trading stock really yeah, yeah. i mean you know iron ore's been volatile and they yeah. these guys are still a big producer and they're a high cost producer of iron ore lithium price is volatile and there has been a very rapid change of strategy Absolutely. with the lithium yeah. um, thing where they've gone from selling spodumene to processing to pulling back into countries, out of mm. countries. I think FY24 looks like a consolidation year for men when you read the analyst yeah. notes and it's lift off into FY25. They're very upbeat about the future, though, yeah. they? So yeah. you don't get a sense that there's not a pipeline of opportunities they're looking oh, at. I mean, too. Chris Ellison said that almost the problem we have is we have too many opportunities yeah. and yeah. it's trying to work out where to allocate capital to right. what's the best one. Um, yeah. So, you know, gas is a big opportunity for Potentially them. for them too. Yeah. We touch on iron ore, so let's do BHP and we'll say, um, again, these are not the, these weren't the halcyon days for, for the, the, you know, bulk commodities, um, but we've seen some very good ones, still returning very well. Dividend yeah. was cut pretty heavily. So Dividend was a bit yeah. of a negative surprise, you know, just a bit weaker than expected, but still yeah, a very it's good It's appropriate dividend. in these environments. Yeah, yeah I think story. so. Yeah, and, and look, the iron ore price has bounced since the result. It flirted with $100 yeah, not yeah. too long ago. Um, China looks like it's starting to really ramp up some stimulus efforts. We're seeing them cut yeah. mortgage rates, starting to free up liquidity. That's maybe a good sign for the Chinese mm. economy, which seems like it's in a bit of a funk at the moment. But, you know, BHP... Best in class. Yeah. And you, you, the copper story is still there. You know, it's yeah. something that's going to play out over the next decade. That's it. That's it. Um, just some other stocks just briefly before we leave off on this one. A couple of the results that I listened into, IDP Education, thought was a really, really good result, Ben. Yep. Again, cycling interesting and different, difficult environment last time. Absolutely. Um, share price arrived, though. It's moved up appropriately. Yep. PEX is very low, the share price. Yes. And the catalyst may only be... Um, you know, something like a PE takeover or something of that kind. But they and, and primary investments with its split, yeah, yeah. Um, a retail stock, as you mentioned at the beginning, that is defying the gravity of the consumer, the the, the theoretical gravity. Completely. What are the other ones that you use? Had a look at. And, yeah, uh, look, I, I, Ramsey was one I yeah. listened into because I, I feel like that's just been a massive underperformer for some time now. The result was weak, which we knew it was going to be. It seemed a bit weaker to, than even the market expected. But I have noticed it, it improved some buying. A couple of days later, after the result, yeah. yeah. And you know, this is a business that owns incredible property assets. Um, yeah. Which are valued at cost. Salt pats, brickworks, a number of businesses. This is how you do it, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, Wesley's. And, and and so I think it's an interesting one in that, you know, you speak to doctors and stuff at the moment and we've got a number of clients in this area and they, they'll sort of say it was probably peaked out in terms of all the pain yeah. three to six months ago. Um, couldn't get nurses, costs running Wages, rampant, yeah. um, still a backlog of cases that they're trying to get through. 
Um, Some people not they're going for elective surgeries and things like that. But yeah. that's come back now pretty yep. much, we believe, don't we? So Yeah. So I think that was interesting. I, I'm interested in Pexa. Yeah. Um, I mean, these are a few stocks that we maybe don't own as much, but Pexa, for those who don't know, is a business that came out of Macquarie that um, digitized the property settlement industry, 90% plus EBIT margins. Yeah. I, I mean, we sort of thought, imagine REA buying Pexa. Would- well, it could be. It could, it could be a private equity. Or it could be something like that. But they've done, they bought Mortgage Choice, of course. So yeah. it is you interesting. See it. It's definitely a play there, potentially. Yeah. Um, and again, but it wasn't a high earnings period. So this is like well, Ramsey, like, actually, when you do it. Yeah. Ramsey got a pro- private equity bid last year that yeah. didn't materialise. So you know they're in focus, these sorts of businesses, yeah. as they would be. Um, ben, the, 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 the market finished a little bit lower for the month of August, September. You know, it's it's more or less about the companies getting out and seeing investors yep. and for us clients. Um, yep. But but this is a time when we don't get as much individual stock news, is it? No, that's right. So we'll we'll the the, the news flow, thankfully, <laughs> will will slow for a little while because it has been it's been pretty crazy. But um, look, I, I I think the reporting season, the inflation data that came out during yeah. the reporting season. Um, bodes well for the run into the end of the year yeah. because we are seeing earnings have held up better than consensus. Better than expected. It feels like rates have potentially peaked for now. Um, we're, you know, that's going to be an we're ongoing cer- piece we've of We've certainly work. seen bond yields retreat from yep. higher levels, which is comforting from equity markets. Yep. And um, the Aussie dollar's been very weak, which is good for a lot of US dollar earning yeah, exactly. Australian businesses. Yeah, That's yeah. going to, if this holds, this we're going to see consensus upgrades coming through there yeah. as well. Yeah. Um, and there's opportunities out there. Like yeah. I, I still feel it's like a very, it's not like everything is hot. And no, you know, small really, small caps like, are still pretty low. And small unloved. caps are yeah. that that looks like a value area. So there's plenty to talk about, and we, you know, we, we'll wrap up this review of the reporting season here and look forward to bring all our clients and viewers another update in September. Yep. Um, um, and we look forward to, to speaking to you then.